Welcome, Angry Fateful. Today, on Psycho and Sociopath, we're going to talk about Delphine LaLaurie. But uh, her, Delphine, actually, the, yeah, her Marie, first name. Yeah, Marie Delphine McCarthy. McCarthy or McCarthy. That's her actual first maiden. Yeah, she became. But she has as, like. Oh, after her third marriage is when she became Madame LaLaurie. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's one of those things that. <laughs> and let's not make any jokes about people who have been married three times because I'm about to do that. <laughs> See, you're not the only one that can set, this, set themselves up for a joke. Yeah, that's a... But I had to do it intentionally, whereas yours. Mine, mine, or mine would probably be the whole fact because uh, we still got to write a couple of uh, scripts for TikTok. But she was born during the Spen, uh, Spanish colon, uh, colonization period, uh, and she was married three times in Louisiana, and that's where she mostly lived. Uh, she maintained her position in New Orleans socialite until April 10th, 1834, when rescuers respond to a fire at her Royal Street mansion, which is still there. Yeah. Or are they, they redid it, I think. I'm sure. Uh, they discovered uh, bound slaves, and this is the time frame where it was the South and we did have slaves, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, they discovered bound slaves in her attic who showed evidence of cruel, violent abuse over a long period. Uh, Laura, Laura Lee house was subsequently uh, sacked by an outraged mom, mob in New Orleans uh, by the New Orleans citizens. She escaped to France with her family. Uh, the mansion traditionally held to be uh, Lori's is landmarked in the French Quarter and is part uh, in part because it's historically uh, and uh, archaeologically archaeologically man I can't freaking say that word architecturally significance there we go I did it it's called the Laura Lehman huh Be oh, see, even my daughter has to correct me. That's what's really sad about my dyslexia. Well, then she needs to grab a, a cushion or and she needs to get in the frame. Hey, you want to you wanna do it with us? I mean, I'm just going to search it up for you. Uh, you, hey, you she can, can sit in here. and do it on camera. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can do it with us. There, there we go. And anyways, can, can you hand me the thing so I can search it up how to... I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. But she can't hear me because I'm in your headset. Yeah. <laughs> because if I don't, if I don't, if I don't do it, that if I, uh, I could have gotten. But it's uh, the address is actually 1140 Royal Street and was, in fact, rebuilt after the departure from uh, her departure from New Orleans. So. <laughs> So her early life, uh, she was born on March 19th, 1787. As one of the five children, her father was Louis Bartholomew. God, man, these words. I... Architectural. There we go. Arch architectural, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's... I'm just going to say her father uh, bought the fa uh, the bought the family uh, uh, brought the family to New Orleans from Ireland around 1730 during the free uh, French colony period. Uh, her mother was uh, Marie Jeanette Lorable. That's literally more. Look that one up. Lor here, let me just do it this way. This is this is our uh, 
um, what do you call it? Pro pro stuff. This is this is how pro we are. Mm -hmm. I had to I had to get my child to help me out with words. Well, it's one of those. Help. It's one of those things, Mora. I want you podcast. Okay. Uh, I need I need you to read me words. See, I was pronouncing her name with an English accent, and was just saying Moira. Yeah, it sounds a bit more sophisticated than that. That I have that as the thing. Yeah, it's uh, you know what's really sad? A friend of mine had to tell me how to pronounce my I was going Mora. Like O R uh O R A is like now it's Mara. I was like, oh, I don't even know how to, I know how to spell it. I don't know how to pronounce my own daughter's name. Which is sad. Uh well, like, dad didn't say it the same way. Yeah. Right. That's only because I was doing it. But I mean, at least you didn't name her Dashiki or LaFonda or <laughs> this is true. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Laurable. Oh, people. That's weird. What? Lorable. Lorable? Yeah. I just can't wait. You know what? You know, one thing though, is I can't wait is when go to the uh, Oh yeah, her mother's maiden name. Yeah. Also known as the widow Le Come. Because her marriage to Louis B. McCarty was her second. Both of Delphine's parents were prominent in the town's European Creole community. Her uncle by marriage, Esteban Rodriguez Mayiro, was governor to the Spanish-American provinces of, of Louisiana and Florida during 1785 to 1791. And her cousin, Augustine de McCarty, was mayor of New Orleans from 1815 to 1820. She was only yeah. four years old when the Haitian Revolution erupted in 1791, something that made slaveholders in the southern United States and the Caribbean very afraid of resistance and rebellion among slaves. Her uncle had been murdered in 1771 by his own slaves, and the revolution that had inspired the local Minya conspiracy in 1791, and the Pont Copea conspiracy in 1794, and the German Coast Uprising in 1811, which all of which caused many slaveholders to discipline slaves even more harshly out of fear of insurrection. So it just escalated the bullshit. Yeah, it just kept escalating. I mean, one, one revolution after another, one uprising after another. Well, the first marriage uh, on June, June 11th, 1800, at the age of, the ripe old age of 13, see, you're an old widow back then. You'd be a spinster right now. Uh, yeah, you'd be a spinster. You'd be a spinster back then. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd be skewered at this point. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, we, we, you'd have to keep that stuff on the down low, and you would probably be working in, in a library know, somewhere. Stoned to death. Skewered. Yeah, you'd probably be stoned to death. or No, you'd probably be burnt to a stake. Yeah, burned at the stake. Yeah, they did that with no, witches. That was prop the proper thing in the Bible was getting stoned to death for being gay. These are Creole. They are not proper by the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but at age 13, uh, Delphine married Don Romero Rom de Lopez y Agulo. Ag Agulo? Angulo? Angulo. Uh, a... Uh, royal uh spanish officer because i'm not doing that whole spanish thing uh Don hey. Ramon de la pose de le po, le po. let me start over don Ramon de lopez de lopez y angelo there we go i was gonna say the royal uh at some point maria is gonna come back and correct us anyway so don't yeah worry. Uh, I, I, I was on the same page on that one. <laughs> I was like, Marie's going to have to say something about that one. She's uh, probably over there dying. Because she's like, oh, isn't that cute? They're trying to pronounce things in Spanish. Yeah. I can say burrito. burrito. I can say nacho supreme. Oh, oh, I can say churro. I can say. um, I can say chicharrones. <laughs> tacos <laughs> tacos <laughs> el carbon yeah. cerveza, polo. cerveza. Say, 
Attila either. <laughs> or quesadilla. Uh, quesadilla. But he was the royal officer. He probably at... says Japa, uh, j- uh, uh, Jalapeno. <laughs> Jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to do the math in that one. <laughs> she looked up. She's like, what? Uh, and then you saw the gears turning for a second. All right. Anyways. Yeah, I saw the gears turning a little bit. Uh, but he was a Spanish officer at the St. Louis Cardinal in New Orleans, uh, as it was spelled in, oh, wow, Louisiana, as it was spelled in Spanish, had become a Spanish colony in 1760 after the French was defeated in the Seven Year War. Seven years. Uh, in 1804, after the American uh, acquisition of what was then I, I had to do it slowly more. Uh, Don Ramon had been appointed a position of uh, general of, uh, for Spain and the territories in Louisiana and was called to appear at the court of Spain while en route to Madrid with uh, Dauphine, who was uh, then pregnant with Don Marone's sudden, suddenly, then pregnant. Okay, God. Yeah, okay. So while en route to Madrid with Delphine, who was then pregnant, Don Ramon suddenly died in Havana. Um, a few days later after his death, Delphine gave birth to his daughter, Marie Borgia, or Borgia Delphine Lopez Il Angelo uh, de la Candelaria. Yeah, nicknamed Borquita. The widow Delphine and her child returned to New Orleans. Yep. Uh, and the okay. Let me let me let me let me look at the. Let me look at. Okay, she was married at age thirteen. I'm trying to. Okay, the first marriage at thirteen. Do 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 do. So she was. She was seventeen when her husband died and she remarried four years later no yeah yeah you're right four years later she married four years later so she was like 23 uh jean uh black banquet god i hate blank Blank uh a prominent banker merchant lawyer liquid that's the thing legacy yeah uh legislator that's the thing back then that's really weird is the people that if you go back back in that time frame Mm -hmm. the actual like congressmen and uh senators from back that time frame they only met in the capital for very few times because they had to run their farm half the time that was a that was a thing back then now that's career politician to where they basically the only time well that's the way that it used to be used to be because you know the states would pick their representatives and the representatives would then go to washington okay somewhere along the lines or somewhere along the way the politicians revamped the rule they they passed some kind of legislation that said eh we want to you know we don't want to have any term limits because it used to be that they could be there for two terms and then they had to return to civilian life. Yeah. Well, most and that's of why they were called return. representatives because they were sent as representatives of their states. Yeah. And and then it got all cockeyed and backwards and jacked up and. Well, most of the most of the uh, representatives didn't want to stay long, anyways. Yeah. Because they 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 rather work on their farm, uh, their livelihood, and their family. Of course, back oh, yeah. then they didn't have the they didn't have the fast travel that we do now. Well, still, I mean, a lot of them were either farmers, a lot of them were industrialists, or some of them were doctors. And, and, and to a degree, there are some st- still some some lawmakers that have gone to Washington that during their uh, recess periods, they'll still practice medicine back in their home, their home districts. Yeah, just to keep their medical licenses good. Well, uh, I think it was uh, oh, who was it? The, 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 
damn, I can't remember her name. Uh, but she was trying to become president in the Democratic Party. Uh, the Navy uh, Navy officer. God, I can't remember no, her name. Remember. <clears throat> but don't much keep up with the Democrats for obvious reasons. So. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> it's like he ended up purchasing the house at four, uh, 409 Royal Street in New Orleans for the family, which became known as Villa Basquez. Dude, I got it right. Bas- Basquez. Uh, Delphine <laughs> had. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> had four children by Basquez uh, named Marie, Louis, Marie, God, Lou. There, how do you name your kid the exact same name, but just at the end, la, the, the third name, you, you name it like, oh, we're going to do your last name different. What am I going to go by? Uh, uh, Actually, the middle one has the first one split. <laughs> That is true. There's only like one of them that's original. The, yeah, there's only. Like, yeah, hold on. Is yeah, there's only like Pierre one. Of them. Blanc. There's only one that's I mean, they kind have of the original. Same last name. They just have two middle names. Still. Well, they had four names. Yeah. So, but um, Bas- except for poor. Well, no, yeah, they had four names. They had the surname, you had your first name, and then your first name with the French names, their, their first name usually comes in two parts. You know, like you had Jean-Luc Picard. Yeah, but French, uh, European names, and they've been doing that for e- uh, eons to where they'll give like 15 different freaking names. And <sighs> from, what, from what I was told, they take the maiden name of the mother and they give that to him too and mm-hmm. it's just to remember the whole family line right imagine calling her one of the marie's oh no i had to do that i had to do that when when i was in uh uh corrections this guy had a long long name and it literally it it didn't fit on his uh id card I was like what the hell? It, but on his uh, mail that he would get, it would be like fully on there. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing this whole name. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> That's all it was. Uh, but he ended up dying in 1816. So, Long eight years. Huh? Long eight years. Yeah, I mean, four kids, eight years kid every two years, years after that. she bred well in captivity apparently yeah apparently <laughs> yeah but on the third marriage on june 25th 1825 delphine married her third husband a physician leonard lewis Nico- damn fucking 15 names uh who is much younger than her in 1831, she brought uh, brought pop- uh, pro- uh, that she bought property at 1140 uh, Royal Street, which is the uh, uh, the murder house, mm-hmm. uh, which she managed uh, managed in her uh, her own name with little uh, involvement of her husband. In 1832, she had a two story mansion built there, complete with attachment slave quarters. She lived there with her third husband and two uh, two of her daughters, and maintained the a central position in New Orleans, uh, New Orleans uh, society. See, this is a this is a thing. Uh, the weird thing that I've always hated was the socialites ideal uh, ideal. Yeah, I mean, we actually have it in town. It's uh, the red hat girls or women or red hat yeah. grandmothers or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> red-headed grandmothers no red hat yeah i know what you meant you had it right the first time i was just like red-headed grandmothers that's hilarious yeah but they do a lot of charity work so it's it's nothing like really bad but they're i've never met them i've 
I, I know they meet sometimes up at a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that uh, egg place over by the mall. Mm -hmm. They eat there for breakfast sometime. Uh, ma marriage uh, soon, uh, soon showed signs of strain, however. On November 16, 1832, Dauphine uh, petitioned the first uh, judicial, uh, district court for separation uh, from bed and board of her husband. That's what they called it? Yeah, separation from bed and board. Yeah. Uh, Delphine claimed that she had been treated uh treated her in such a manner as to re, uh, render their uh, living together unsupportable claims which her son and two uh, to her daughters by uh, Jean confirmed uh, the separation does not seem to have been permanent as the doctor was present at the Royal Street house in April 10th 1834 the day of the fire now we get to the good stuff the really weird stuff now a lot of people uh that actually visited uh our uh political correspondent that we don't use that much because he's he's still doing his thing uh he said he was over there and there's a lot of ghosts still there yeah i'm sure there is yeah uh but uh, the treatment of her slaves between 1831 to 1834 are mixed. Uh, Harriet Manitou, uh, uh, writing in 1838, and recounts tales told by her by New Orleans, New Orleans residents during her 1836 visits, claimed enslaved people of Lauren were observed to be singular uh, hangered. Haggard and wretched. However, what is haggard and wretched? Look that up. I know what wretched means, but I never heard of haggard. However, nice huh? Okay, nothing. Go ahead. How exhausted and unreal? Well, especially from fatigue, worried, or worry, or suffering. Okay. I doubt it's the second one. Of a hawk caught for training as a wild adult for more than 12 months. Caught for training a wild adult for more than 12 months. Huh, weird. Yeah. It's two separate meanings. It's what's really weird. But, uh, However, in uh, pu uh, public appearance, Lauren ha w was seen to be gently uh, polite to black people, and uh, she was concerned of the slave uh, health of her slaves. Mm -hmm. Funeral registries between 1830 to 1834 documented the death of 12 enslaved people at the Royal Street Mansion, although the cause of death were not mentioned and infectious disease could easily have been the cause. Those 12 deaths included Boney, a cook in uh, Laundrius, and her four children mm -hmm. uh, had previously been slaves by a refuge from St. Dominguez and was described to in her cell as a chronic runaway. Okay. With the influx of white and free St. Dominguez uh, refugees of color and those whom they had enslaved, the fear of enslaved people from St. Dominguez still lingered in Louisiana. But we'll talk about the fire because back then, back then with the slavery and how they were actually treated uh it wasn't uncommon for that mm -hmm. uh back then uh, people of uh that were considered slaves and this is slaves from any kind of uh uh oppression uh they they were property 
to the point to where if it broke down, most of the time they just go buy a new one. Or if it ran away, as these do, they, they would, I mean, even the horses, they would shoot. They wouldn't shoot a horse, but they'll shoot a slave or mangle. Uh, <clears throat> on April 10th, 1834, a fire broke out in the residence on Royal State, uh, Street, starting in the kitchen. When the police and fire marshal got there, they found the cook, a 70-year-old uh, woman, chained to the stove by her ankle. She later said that she had, uh, had set the fire as a suicide attempt because she feared being punished, which that happened a lot, too. Yeah. As... Uh, she said that enslaved people took into the uh, upper uh, uppermost room, never came back. So it was basically she that was the torture room, right? Uh, in the as reported, the New Arts B of eighteen eleven eighteen thirty four, bystanders responded to the fire, attempted to uh, to uh, enter the quarters of those enslaved to ensure that everyone had been evacuated upon being refused uh refused the keys by the laurelines uh the bystanders broke down the doors to the quarters and found seven slaves more or less hor horribly mutilated uh sus suspended by the neck with their limbs uh amputated stretched and torn from one extremities to the other Mm -hmm. Oh, apparently stretched and torn from one extremities to the other, who claimed to have been imprisoned there for some months. Yeah. One of those who entered the premises was Judge Jean-Francois uh, Francois, uh, Canogui. Can, can go? Yeah, Canogui, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Who subsequently, uh, subsequently deposed to, uh, to having found uh, the La Rue uh, Lori mentioned, among others, a negress wearing an eye, a female black or a black female. Um, uh, uh, wearing an iron collar and an old Negro woman who had received a very deep wound on her head, who was too weak to be able to walk. Uh, he said that when he questioned her husband about these enslaved on the property, he was told in an uh, insolent manner that some people had better stay home at home rather than come to others' houses to dictate laws and meddle with other people's business. A version of this story circulating in 1836, recounted by Martinu, uh, added that the enslaved people were emancip or eman or em em emaciated. No, not, not emasculated, emaciated, which means they were starved. Okay. Uh, showed signs of being flayed with a whip, were bound with restrictive postures, and wore spiked iron, iron collars, which kept their heads in static positions. Um, when the discovery of the abused enslaved people became widely known, a mob of local citizens um, attacked the residents, demolished and destroyed everything that they could lay their hands on. The sheriff and his officers were called upon to disperse the crowd, but by the time the mob left, the property had, property had sustained major damage with scarcely anything remaining but the walls. The slaves were taken to a local jail where they were available for public viewing. Uh, the Bee reported that by April 12th, up to 4,000 people had attended to view the enslaved people to convince themselves of their suffering. The Pittsfield Sun, citing the New Orleans Advertiser and writing several weeks later after the evacuation of Lowry uh, quarters of enslaved people, claimed that two of the enslaved people were found in the mansion had died since their rescue. It added, we understand that in digging the yard, bodies have been disinterred and condemned, and the condemned well in the grounds of the mansion had been uncovered. Others, particularly that of a child, were found. These claims were repeated by Martineau in her 1838 book, Retrospect of Western Travel, where she placed the number of unearthed bodies at two, including the child, Leah. Mm. Now, Lurie uh, did it, you know, she, she, is, she, is, she escaped. Um, uh, after her, her life after 18, at the uh, 1834 fire is not well documented. Martineau wrote, uh, wrote in, the 18, in 1838 that Lurie, La Lurie fled New Orleans 
during the uh, mob violence that followed the fire, taking a coach to the waterfront and traveling by schooner to Mobile, Alabama, and then to Paris. By the time Mortenu visited, personally visited the Royal Street Mansion in 1836, it was still unoccupied and badly damaged, with gaping windows and empty walls. But living uh, with his uh, yeah mother and two sisters, Pauline and Laurie, in exile in Paris, Dauphine's son, uh, Pauline, wrote on August 15, 1842. And his brother-in-law, uh, Augustine de Los, stated that Delphine was seriously about, uh, serious about returning to New Orleans and had thought about doing so for a long time. Uh, Baskin wrote in the same letter that he believed that his mother never had any idea about the reason uh, for her departure from New Orleans. Uh, despite Daphne's bad mood and her determination to re return to New Orleans, the disapproval of her children and other relatives had apparently been enough for her to cancel her plans. It kind of sounds like she had dementia after a while. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, with with everything that was going on, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. The circumstances of Laureline's uh, death are also unclear. In 1888, George Washington Cable recounts a popular but unsubstance uh, story hold on, that... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, subsequent? A uh, subsequent uh, story that Laureline had died in France in a boar hunting accident in the late 1930s. Wow. She was about 100 years old. No, she was more than 100 years old. How long, How long does it say that she... Because it... Uh, let me see. The circumstances of LaLaurie's death are also unclear. In 1888, George Washington Cable recounted a popular but unsubstantiated story that LaLaurie uh, had died in France in a boar hunting accident in the late 1930s. Like you just said, um, Eugene Bacchus, who served as sexton to the St. Louis Cemetery Number no. 1 until 1924, discovered an old cracked copper plate in Alley 4 of the cemetery. The inscription on the plate read, Madame Lalaurie, ni Marie Delphine McCarthy, décidé et Paris la 7 décembre 1842, il a l'âge de six. Um, the English translation of the inscription reads, Madame Lurie, uh, La Lurie, born Marie Delphine McCarthy, died in Paris 17, or December 7th, 1842, at the age of 55. Uh, according to the French archives of Paris, however, La Lurie died on 7 December 1849 at the age of 62. That's how old she was when she died. That is no, crazy. she was 62. That, that's speculation, though. Oh, speculation, 143. Yeah. Well. So the original New Orleans man in, our mansion occupied La La Lurie did not survive. The impressive mansion at 1140 Royal Street on the co corner of Governor Nichols Street, formerly known as Hospital Street, commonly referred to as the La Lurie or Haunted House, is not the same building inhabited by La Lurie. She acquired the, when, when she acquired the property in 1831 from Edmund Seigneur de Fasson, a house was already under construction and finished for La Lurie. Um, the house was burned in, by the mob in 1834, remained in a ruined state for at least another four years, and it was rebuilt by a Paris Tetastour after 1838 and assumed the appearance that it has today. Over the following decades, it's been used as a public high school, a conservatory of music, and an apartment building, a refuge for young delinquents, a bar, a furniture store, and a luxury an apartment building. Uh, the dwelling has a third floor and rear building added later in the 19th century, and the rear building on Governor's Nickel Street, which had only had one floor until the second one was added in the 20th century and remodeled in the 1970s, when the second floor interior of the building was done over by Cox and, or Koch and Wilson architects. At three stories high, it was described in eight, 1928 as the highest building for four squares or for squares around. With the result of that, from the Coppola of the roof on the roof, one may look out over the 
Vin Cari and see the Mississippi at, uh, in its crescent before Jackson Square. Uh, the entrance to the building bears iron grill work and the door is carved with the you know, with an image of uh, Phoebus, Phobus, Phoebus, Phoebus, Phoebus in his chariot with wreaths of flowers and depending, gar uh, depending garlands and bas relief. Inside the vestibule is floored in black and white marble and with a curved mahogany rail staircase runs the full three stories of the building. Uh, the second floor holds three large drawing rooms connected by ornamented sliding doors whose walls are decorated with plaster rosettes, carved woodwork, black marble mantel pieces, and fluted pilasters. Uh, yeah, apparently Nicholas, apparently in 2007, Nicholas Cage bought the house for 3.445 million. Uh, yeah. to, uh, to protect uh, actors' privacy, the mortgage documents were arranged in such a way that Cage's name did not appear on them. On November 13th of 2009, the property then valued at $3.5 million was listed for auction as a, real, a result of the foreclosure and purchase, uh, the purchase by uh, Regionals Financial Corps and for $2.3 million. That's because he didn't pay his taxes yeah. but <clears throat> uh the folklore on the, all this stuff uh of the abuse and murder of those enslaved on the property calculated uh circulated in new orleans during 19th century and were reprinted in collections of stories by henry castellius castan castanoles and george washington cables cables accounted not to confuse with the unrelated 1881 novel, Madame Daphine, uh, was based on the contemporary reports in newspapers such as New Orleans, B, uh, New Orleans Bee, and, uh, and the Advertiser. And upon 1838 accounts, uh, the res uh, retrospect of Western travels, he added some of his own synapses dialogue and speculations on it but it's talking about this oh wow it is a human caliper uh, vic uh victims obviously had uh her uh there was uh, da, da, da. to the uh to the discoveries allegedly made a re uh made by rec uh, rescuers during the 1834 fire, including a victim who obviously had her arms amputated, her skin peeled off in a circular pattern, uh, making her look uh, more like a human centipede, uh, caterpillar, and, and another who had uh, her limbs broken and reset at odd angles to resemble a human crab. Wow. Hmm. Wow. I mean, wow. So this bitch was crazy. So wow. That's that's some weird stuff on that one. Yeah, she uh she a little out there. Yeah. Which is really strange is I was like, this, hey, more, do, do this for me. She was born in uh, 1787. 17. No, 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 to calculate it up. Yeah. Because what I'm curious about right now, because most of the women that actually do uh, start out to be serial killers, most of the time it's like 40s. Mm -hmm. So uh, 1787. And minus that to uh, 1834. Actually, uh, 1832. Yeah, she was 45. So it makes perfect sense. Man, they, well, no, every every female serial killer that we have actually uh, talked about here recently, uh, the men, it's totally different. It's at a young age. You can find out in a young age, but about 45, uh, 40 or 45, when a woman goes through menopause, 
their bodies really fucked off and change. Yeah, it does happen. So until I get there. So I hope I'm in a fucking grave by then. <laughs> I just come over. <sighs> well, man, by the time by that, you know, with, with the with the way that medical advances are supposed to be going in this country, hell in this world, by the time it gets to where you and I get uh get to that age where our kids and grandkids start contemplating putting us in a home. Half of our bodies may be synthetic, man. Dude, I want that so bad. <laughs> I could see you. You're going to be like, this is just like that game. Shadow run. I want a deck that's going to allow me to hack into anything. <laughs> what, is, what is this? Oh, that's cool. I know. Huh. Uh. But anyways, uh, that's the end of this episode. We're going to go ahead and start recording, so we're not going to change our shirts, but we're going to start recording uh, for uh, What the Hell, which is going to be on Sunday. We're still going to keep up with the schedule, but we're going to talk about how dangerous the animal kingdom really is. Okay. Because Honey but, Badger doesn't give a shit. Dude, you have no fucking clue. I watched the whole video about it, and it's uh, wow, just wow on some of these things. But thank you for watching Angry Faithful. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Psychos and Sociopaths. <laughs>